Welcome to another lab in Network Support Services, Windows Networking. I will be hosting this lab in Hyper-V. You as the student will follow along, answering all questions, and taking the appropriate screenshots as shown in your worksheet. So let's begin. 70-740 Lab 11 Installing and configuring the Windows Nano Server. This will be a follow-up to our Lesson 11 where we discussed the Nano Server. In this lesson we're going to be creating and deploying a Nano Server. We're going to look at configuring a Nano Server with the Nano Recovery Tool. We'll be adding a Nano Server to our domain and then finally we'll be adding roles to a nano server. So we're going to be working uh, obviously we can't join to our domain if our domain controller is not running so the LUN DC1 uh, it's already up and running. We're going to be using our SVR1 to be able to create our nano media and then the, we'll be creating a, a VM running a VHDX uh, for our nano-svr1. So let's begin the lab. In our first exercise we're going to be creating and deploying a nano server. In this exercise we will create a nano server image using Windows PowerShell. We'll then create a virtual machine based on the newly created image. Nano server is a new installation option for Windows Server 2016. In addition to having a smaller hardware footprint than Server Core, it also has no local sign-in capability. It supports only 64-bit application tools and agents. All this helps to create a more secure installation. Nano Server cannot be installed directly from the installation media during setup. In other words, you can't use an ISO or a DVD. Instead, you must access the Windows Server 2016 installation media nano server folder. We copy that and we use that to generate a nano server image. So let's, let's go ahead and begin our exercise. We're going to open up our SVR1 and log into it. And once we're in that, we're going to go into File Explorer and we're going to open up that share to the software folder that's shared on our domain controller and we can see that right here we're going to we're going to open up and we're going to mount that image just like that we have our image mounted as a dvd we're going to go to the nano server folder see this did not exist in previous copies of server we're going to right click it and we're going to copy and now on our C drive we're simply going to right click and paste this will take a few moments and then there it's done we're going to go ahead and we're going to start our PowerShell and just to be sure I'll tell it to run as administrator and we're going to run the following command install dash Windows feature rsat dash hyper dash v dash tools and with the include all sub feature and a restart. Okay, well, looks like we already had it in there. Exit code, no change needed. We, I had already previously done this. Okay, so we're going to change directory to our nano server folder. In fact, we're going to drill into that and we're going to go into the nano server image generator folder. We're going to import a command module, a commandlet rather. And let's see, they're saying to just do it without the .p for the script on the end, verbose. 
Let's see if this works. There it is. We've loaded our nano server commandlet. Now we're going to get into the meat of it. We're going to actually create our nano server image now. We're going to run new nano server image. We're going to specify the deployment type. It's going to be a guest that's going to create that VHD or VHDX in this case. We're going to specify what edition of server we want to install. We're going to do standard. And then we're going to specify the media path. And that media path is simply going to be our root of C. Then we need to specify the base path. And that is a BS and a hyphen. And then we're going to go ahead and type in the C colon slash nano. That's going to be followed by a target path. And that's going to specify our actual VHD that we're going to create. And we're going to call that nano-svr1. And that's going to be a VHDX. Making sure we've got everything spelled right. Now we're going to specify the name of the computer that, that's going to be created in that. And it's going to be nano SVR1. And we're going to do that all caps. Another space. We're going to specify storage. Another space. We're going to do a dash package. We're going to specify a package to install and it's going to be Microsoft dash nano server dash IIS dash package. So this is going to have the IIS already installed so that we could create this as a web server. Let's see if we typed everything right. We're going to hit enter. It wants to know, hey, who has the authorization? Well, the administrator password we have to provide. I did something wrong. One or more packages do not exist. Okay, what did I type wrong? I'm going to pause this while I check my server. Oh, I don't even have to pause it. I typed NAN server, Microsoft dash NAN server. I need to add an O to nano. Let's go back here. That should correct it. Again, we got to provide our credentials. And now it's running. Got to make sure you type the correct spelling of everything. A few more moments, and we should be done. Won't take very long. So I'm not even going to pause the video this time. Depending on time of day, have a sip of coffee, have a sip of a cool drink, and we're done. Oh, no, we're not done. We're not quite done yet. Thought, thought we got done. I was fooled. Now it's installing that storage package. It's installing the guest package, and then that, in other words, we're making that VHDX, right? If we had not specified, let's see, let's see, right, if we had not specified the nano server, you know, this is some, something we could do later on, and we'll see at the end in our lab challenge where you can add roles or features uh, afterwards. But as you can see, we have successfully completed. We can see our image path. So if we jump back over here to File Explorer, we can see there's our nano server folder that we copied over from the media. Well, here's that new directory. There's our WIM if we wanted to install from the WIM. There's our VHDX. We're in great shape. Now that I've opened up the nano folder, let's go ahead and take a screenshot and paste that into step number 13. You've got your screenshot. Let's answer our first question. And that first question is, 
when you create a .wim file instead of a .vhdx file. How is the .wim file used to deploy the nano server? How would you use a .wim file? Well, the answer is you would deploy the .wim file on a physical computer or a virtual machine. And in other words, we would use that in conjunction with our WinPE to actually do the installation instead of just creating a virtual machine. So question number one, answer, you would deploy the .wim file on a physical computer or in a virtual machine. And just understand that when you do that, you'd have to use that WinPE to run the installation. Okay, now let's go ahead. We're going to remember we're working in an enhanced session, right? This enhanced session allows us to copy and paste to and from our virtual machine to the physical host. We're going to select our VHDH, VHDX image. We're going to right click on it. We're going to copy. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my virtual hard drive folder on my physical computer. And I've already got a copy of File Explorer open on my other screen. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring that over. Here it is. Here's our virtual hard disks. I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste. And here it comes. That's one of the benefits of the enhanced session in Hyper-V. You can copy and paste to and from your physical machine and the, your virtual machines. Just about done. So now, as you can see, we've got a configured virtual hard disk that's ready to begin use as a server. Look at the size of it. It's less than 600 megabytes. This is a working server that we can configure. Let's take a look. Where was that server core that I created? What was the name of that machine? Well, let's see here. Win 2016 core. Where is Win 2016 core? Right here. So even though this core is much more slim and more secure, it's still over 10 gigabytes in size. Here's nano server sitting with 600 meg. That's the advantage of using nano server. Okay, so we've got this copied over. We can go ahead and we can close that out. What we're going to do is we're going to go into our Hyper-V manager and we're going to create a new virtual machine and we're going to connect that hard disk to it. We're going to click next. We're going to name it. Well, we're going to give it the same name as we did in our PowerShell command, nano-svr1. We're going to click next. For the generation, we're going to specify gen2. We're going to click next. We're going to leave the memory set the way it is. We're going to allow it to use dynamic memory. For our networking, we're going to connect this to the same switch as our domain. And our domain's on the LUN network, London network. If we didn't do that, we wouldn't be able to join it to our domain, right? We're going to click Next. We're going to say we want to use an existing virtual hard disk because we already created it. We're going to scroll down and let's see, where is that? Right there, nano-svr1. We're going to click Open. We're going to click Next. We're going to click Finish. We have a server ready to run. We've completed our first exercise. Let's do our second exercise, which is configuring our nano server with the nano recovery tool. We're going to go ahead and we're going to start that nano server. and we're going to open it up take a look at it and we're immediately prompted with username password domain well we know we're not joined to the domain right so we're simply going to log in with administrator now it's kind of hard to see but the underscores 
for username are highlighted. How do you navigate this? You use the tab button so you can kind of see them change there. See? I'm hitting tab. So I'm going to type in administrator and we're going to put our password in and we're going to press enter. This is simply the base administrator group, right? We can see that we're not joined to our domain, we're part of work group. It's Windows Server 2016 standard. The time is actually, well, the time is almost correct. This is still set for Pacific time. Remember, every time we do a Windows installation, that it defaults to Pacific time zone, the West Coast where Microsoft is at. So let's go ahead, and you can see there's a little carrot that little arrow for networking and networking is in white instead of the the lighter white we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit enter and that takes us to our networking settings so let's go ahead and answer our second question our second question is what's the MAC address well we should already remember from our networking section in Hyper-V that all our MAC addresses in Hyper-V are gonna start with 00155D and then the 0161 comes from the IP address assigned to the physical interface on our host. And the uniqueness of it is the 2A. So our MAC address, our, question, our answer for question number two is 00-15-5D-01-61-2A. Go ahead and get that answer typed in. And what we're going to do is we're going to press enter we can now see that we received an IP address from DHCP did we not right there see under prefix origin suffix origin DHCP let's answer our third question what is the IPv4 address and subnet mask you can see it right there on your screen go ahead and type in 172.16.0.123 and 255.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to press escape twice escape and escape we're back at our main menu oh I'm sorry we need to press that one more time now we're going to press our down arrow and highlight WRM we're going to press enter and we're going to enable Windows Remote Management Windows RM we're going to press enter to confirm are you sure yes we are we have enabled Windows RM go ahead and take a screenshot and paste this into step number 15 we're going to press enter to continue we're back to our main menu we're going to go ahead and we're going to log out by simply pressing the escape button on the keyboard we've logged out let's add this to our domain to do that we're going to jump over to our DC1 we're going to connect to it now as we talked about in our lesson our nano doesn't have the normal interface for us to do a domain join and thing like, things like that we need to do this from a thing called djoin this is a process it's, it's a file that allows you to provision and then join a system to a domain we're going to go into PowerShell and in PowerShell we're going to run that djoin command and it's going to be DJ O I N we'll type in the EXE because that's what they show in the instructions we do a switch of provision now oh, it be helpful if I type it correctly provision just double check our spelling PRO vision yep another slash domain a space we specify the name of our domain a space slash machine this slash this specifies the name that we're going to join it to the domain as another space we specify to save the file and then we tell what we want the name of the file to be this is going to be an ODJ blob ODJ blob I'm trouble with my keyboard this morning and we press enter we're pre-provisioning our nano SVR one to be able to be joined to the domain it's going to take just a few more moments and we'll be and we'll finish and there it's done successfully now we're still at our command prompt we're gonna run a set dash item WS man command and it is going to be as such oops did that I inadvertently hit enter WS man with a colon and it looks like a slash localhost slash client slash trusted hosts and then in quotes the IP address of our nano server let's see if we type this correctly and now let's read what it says because this is in relationship to our question number five that's that we're going to answer this command modifies the trusted host list for the dub for the WinRM client the computers in the trusted host list might not be authenticated the client might send credential information to these computers are you sure you want to modify this list so before we press that yes or why and hit enter let's answer our question number five what does the set dash item space WS man command do what it does is it adds that that IP address as being trusted it adds the here's your answer it adds the IP address of the nano server 
to your management computer's list of trusted hosts. That's our domain controller. This allows us to be able to manage it. So it adds the IP address of the nano server to your management computer's list of trusted hosts. Answer to question number five. We're doing, going to do Y for yes and press enter. And we're back to a command prompt. Now, what we want to do is we're going to specify a variable. And that variable gets defined as a dollar sign IP. This allows us to be able to call dollar sign IP rather than typing in our IP address every time. And we specify what does it equal? Well, it equals 172.16.0.152. And we press enter. You've defined a variable. We're going to enter a command, and it's enter dash pss session, a space, the computer name. Well, we haven't joined it to our domain. We don't have DNS running and all that stuff, right? So we don't know. We can't specify a computer name. We can specify an IP address, though. And rather than typing in it every time, I'm just going to do right there dollar sign IP that's going to call that IP address we do credential and here again the credentials that we're going to use are the local credentials on the nano server so I'm going to call I dollar sign IP backslash administrator and press enter we get a an authentication prompt how cool is that capital P a See now, look at the look at the prompt in PowerShell. It changed. It's preceded by the IP address of the nano server. We are connected to the nano server. Let's go ahead, and we're going to run a command to enable a firewall rule, and that's the net sh command. and we specify advanced firewall firewall set rule group and that group equals and then we have to put it in quotes because there's there's spaces in what we're going to spell out file and printer sharing and then we close that with a quote another space new and enable equals yes let's see if we got it typed correctly uh, looks like maybe I did not a specified value is not va valid what did I type incorrectly net sh ADV firewall, firewall, set, rule, group, file, and printer sharing, new. Oh, I did a dash yes. It needs to be equals yes. We'll go back here. Equals. Now let's see if it works. Bingo. 16 rules updated just like that. It's a lot easier than going into a, a graphical interface and right-clicking one and enable and right-clicking another and enable. One shot, 16 firewall rules updated to do what we wanted to do. We're going to go ahead and we're going to disconnect from that session. We're going to type exit-pss session and we're out. Now, we've trusted that IP address, remember? So we're going to do a net use command. We're going to map a drive letter to the hard drive on that computer. Net use Z space backslash 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 172.16.0.152 backslash C dollar sign. Remember that dollar sign on the end means it's a hidden share 
going to press enter command successful let's see if we can switch to that Z colon enter there we are we're connected to the hard drive on the nano server we're going to copy that that ODJ blob that we created over there so we're going to issue the command copy C colon backslash ODJ and I'm just going to hit tab to fill it in that way I don't do a spelling error and so the copy command is copy this to there to Z this will throw it into the root of that drive and it's done now let's enter back into a PowerShell session to connect back to our nano server so enter PSS session our computer name we still have that variable set remember we don't have to type in the whole IP address there we need to specify credentials and that credential again was the dollar sign IP backslash administrator now I could have done an up arrow a number of times and gotten back to that maybe that would have been a good idea so I wouldn't have done spelling errors right there but I caught that we're gonna hit enter we provide our password And once again, we're reconnected to our nano-svr. Nano now, we're going to run another djoin command, but this time it's going to load that odj blob file, and we're going to request it to get processed. So djoin requested odj, a space, slash load file another space we specify the file to be loaded let's see if I can hit tab and get it to fill it in hey it did look at that another space front slash windows path and then we specify where's our windows directory at could have probably did a tab complete there as well another switch of local OS let's see if it likes what we typed nope did something wrong let's scroll back up D join oh I typed in requested ODJ it's request ODJ press enter the provisioning request completed successfully a boot reboot is required for the changes to be applied just like when we, when we join any other machine to our domain you have to reboot for it to take effect right well you got to do the same thing here so do we need to log into that computer and tell it to reboot Nah, we don't need to remember we're connected to it we can you see that right there we're connected to that machine we can run commands against it so let's do that let's run the shutdown command with a slash R for restart and a T prompt and we're going to tell it to do it in five seconds so this is telling it to shut down and restart in five seconds if you change that R to an S it would tell the machine to shut down in five seconds we want it to reboot because we want it to be online right we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna press enter right there you see system will shut down in five seconds if we come over to our VM and it's right here there it's already restarting and it's rebooted that quickly it restarted let's see if we can log in using our domain credentials let's see if it worked yes it did look at the username a datum.com slash administrator we are logged in as the domain administrator
we're no longer logged in as the local administrator. Go ahead and take a screenshot of this and paste it into step number 20. We're ready to move on to the lab challenge. As we talked about, we can add additional features to our nano server after it's been configured. Let's say you need to repurpose it. So our lab challenge is going to be adding roles to a nano server. We're going to use the install dash windows feature command to add the file server server role. Usually you will install the server roles when you create the nano server image. However, to install additional roles after the image has been created, you can use the install dash windows feature commandlet. This only takes, should only take us a few minutes. Let's go ahead. We're going to switch over to our domain controller. And it's right here. And I'm going to just go ahead and type in the word clear and press enter. Um, oh, wait a minute. I was just, I was, I needed to disconnect. Let's go ahead and now we can type in, uh, let's see, we're still at Z. Uh, let's do exit PSS session, see if that lets us do it. Oh, we locked up our, okay, we were, I needed to, I should have close that out first. Silly me. We gotta wait a moment for that to finish out. There it goes. Okay. Let's get back in here because remember that was still connected from when we did our join and then it rebooted so we had some connection issues there. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna type in get dash windows feature and then we're going to specify the nano server to get those features from. You don't have to just do it from your local computer. Get dash windows feature from this computer. Nano dash SVR1. It's collecting those windows features that are installed and what's not installed. It's going to give us a listing of everything so that we can see what's installed, what's not, so we know what maintenance we might want to do. And just like that, it finished. Jumped from 20% to done in an instant. And we can see right here, here is a list of all those different types of roles and features that are available for nano server. You notice it's a much shorter list than what you would see on a standard computer. Remember, it doesn't, it's not full featured there are specif specific roles and features that this can have. What we're going to do is we're going to enter back into a session and connect to this. So we're going to do that same enter PS session. Oh, I have to be on the right screen. Okay. We're going to enter that dash PSS session again. And we're going to connect to our nano server. We don't have to use that dollar sign IP anymore because that nano SVR1 is joined as a computer in our domain now. So we're going to specify computer name and it's nano SVR1. Another space, we're going to, we still have to provide credentials, right? Well, this time the credentials we're going to provide are our administrator credentials for our domain. And we'll press enter and we get our credential request. And we are connected to nano-svr1. We no longer have to connect by IP address. Now, how do we go about installing a new feature? We're going to run a DISM command. DISM EXE and we specify online another space we're going to do enable feature you notice you have to type all these commands now we specify the feature name we do a colon no spaces file dash services another space slash all 
and press enter. Just like that, we can see it has succeeded. Let's go ahead and we're going to type in that Get Windows feature, and now we're going to redisplay our list of installed Windows features. Let's see, what did I type incorrectly here? Oh, wait a minute. First, we need to disconnect our remote se session. And we're back to our regular command prompt. Now we can type in get Windows feature, a space, our nano server, hit enter, it's collecting the data, and now before it just said file and storage services, now we've got the file server role installed. So not only can we use this as a web server, we can use it as a file server. Go ahead, take a screenshot, paste this into step number five in our lab challenge, and we are done. I hope you enjoyed this lab of installing and configuring NanoServer. I will see you in the next lab or lesson. Have a great day.